Hi everyone, it's Shannon and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. I have a amazing and fun small space storage solution for you in today's video, but I want to start by thanking the original Super Glue for sponsoring today's video. Now, this space we're going to tackle today is a very awkward space in the corner of his bedroom. That brick wall is actually a chimney or an old chimney. We live in a 100 plus year old home, so this was one of those obstacles that we had to figure out and make functional. But let's take a look back at what this room looked like before he had a adventure room. And if you want to subscribe, that would be a great way to come back and see the big room reveal that is soon to come as well as how I created this faux brick treatment on this chimney wall. But in today's video, we're going to tackle this awkward space and corner in his bedroom. And I'm starting by just doing some measurements because we're going to custom fit some shelves as well as a little desk for him to utilize in this space. So you can see I'm just measuring that back wall and as well as this chimney off to the side because that is going to delegate how wide and big of a desk that we can make. So I just put down some very simple and basic measurements, headed down into my workshop. I'm using one by twos as the braces for the desk and the shelves. So I'm cutting these one by twos down to those measurements that I had just taken upstairs in his bedroom. So you can see here the three pieces I'm going to be mounting to the wall to help hold up our top pieces. But before I attach them, I am measuring up. Now my desk is going to start at about 29 inches up. That's going to be the bottom of the desk, but our desk is going to be about 30 inches tall once it's all said and done. So I'm marking that and then dry fitting my first board along the back of the wall first, kind of putting it where I put those markings and then grabbed my level to level this board out. Out. So we are going to be anchoring these pieces to the wall to make sure they are super sturdy. And to do that, I'm using a small drill bit to drill straight through the wood into the wall. And that's doing two things. It's creating a pilot hole into our wood, and it's also creating a mark on the wall where we need to specifically add those anchors in. I am adding four anchors to the back of this board. It's about 30 inches long. And here you can see along the wall where I had punctured it with that drill bit. That's where we need to add our anchors. So I'm using a drywall anchors that are metal. And I love these because they have threading all the way down to the tip. So there's no hammering these in. They're not going to smush or break. You just screw them right into your drywall. If your space is not drywall, then make sure you find anchors that are compatible with whatever type of material you are adding your anchors into. And now we're going to go one step further to make sure this project is so strong and perfectly affixed to the wall. We're going to grab our Total Tech by the original Super Glue. You guys are going to love this product. It's an all-in-one heavy-duty sealant and adhesive. So what that means is we need one product to finish this whole project. And you'll see here in just a little bit the different ways we're going to be using this. So what I've done here is I've actually just added the total tech using a caulk gun all the way down the back side of our first piece. It's going to go along the back wall and then lined up my screws and attached those into our anchors. Now I did this exact same process of leveling up my sideboards, drilling through with pilot holes, and then adding anchors into the side walls, adding my total tech to the back, and then adhering them and affixing them with those screws. And this is the first of three shelving units that we're gonna create. Actually, the bottom one is going to be the desk. And right now I am measuring up about 24 inches to get my first height for my shelves. And then I measured up another 11 inches from there to get the shelf above it. So now I'm headed back down into the workshop. All of these again are going to be installed using one by two. So I cut all six pieces that I needed at the same time for those next two shelves. Now, since the shelves are not going to be holding near as much weight as the desk, I'm only attaching three anchors into the wall 
for the back side of each one of these shelves. And now again, I'm adding my total tech onto the back side of each one of these brace pieces. I love this stuff because it is great for all materials. So it's going to bond our wood to our drywall perfectly, creating a permanent and strong bond. And then once all of our brace pieces are attached onto the wall, we can start working on the tops. And what I'm doing here is adding total tech to the top edge of each one of our support pieces before installing each shelf. For these shelves, I am using a one by eight cut down to size so it would fit snugly in between each side of the walls where it's going to make that custom look. And what I did is just pressed that down onto those support pieces to make sure the adhesive would grab and bond. And then used my brad nailer and one and a quarter inch brad nails to secure that top piece down into the brace pieces. Then I went ahead and repeated this process, adding total tech to the tops of those brace pieces and then adding the tops down, securing with one and a quarter inch brad nails. And then for the top, I'm just measuring over on a piece of laminated board to the width that I needed so it's securely and kind of snugly fit in between the chimney and the wall. And then cut that down to size with my circular saw. I did go ahead and sand this piece and because I didn't put it in earlier, I just wanna mention that I also made sure to sand all of the wood pieces throughout this project. I like to use 80 grit sandpaper with my orbital sander to get a nice smooth finish. Now on this top piece, I will mention that I did round over that front top edge. That way when my son is sitting at the desk, it has like a smooth kind of transition so he's not getting poked by a sharp edge. And then same thing here, adding my total tech to the top before adding the desk top. This one was pretty snug, so I got out a piece of scrap wood and my hammer to hammer it down into place. We have a 100 year old home, like I said, so these walls are definitely nowhere near square or even. But that is definitely not something that slows us down. We just make do and then this total tech is actually going to be a big fix for some of the gaps and things that are created when you don't have even services, which I will show you here in just a little bit. Just making sure that I'm going around with my brad nailer again to secure those edges down into the brace pieces underneath. So here we have our basic structure happening. However, we do need to do a little bit of decorative trim work here. So you can see I left a little gap at the end to allow for another one by trim piece on the front. So you can see there is some overhang on the shelf above and that was on purpose. I'm adding total tech to each end piece and then adding another one by two right underneath the shelf and securing it with my brad nails. Also make sure you are nailing down from the top down into the trim piece underneath to make sure your edge stays nice and secure. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have a space in your home that is awkward or different and you're just not quite sure how to utilize it or how to organize it? Leave those down in the comments below for me. Maybe I can help you down there or maybe our friends here that are watching can help too or share your ideas of some of the awkward spaces you've had in your home and how you've transformed them and utilized them so that they're now functional. Our entire house has kind of been a big puzzle like this one. Being that's 100 years old, it's just not traditional at all. We have some of these um, different spots in our home. So built-ins has kind of been our solution for this. And this one has definitely been a huge help in my son's room. If you aren't able to permanently build things into your home, like I'm showing you here, you can also use alternatives such as floating shelves that you can find at Ikea or department stores too. So now you can see we have a desk finally forming, but before we get into any of the finishing work, we did go ahead and drill a hole in the back left corner. That's gonna allow for cords to slide through. Uh, we just have a lamp right now, but in the future, if he ever gets any type of computer thing, something like that, then we'll have space to feed those down into. I also went through and speckled all of the nail holes and the big screw holes that were in the back of those brace pieces. Once it was dry, I went through and sanded it all and cleaned up the mess before I went on to painting. So here I am just taping off the wall so I can paint the wood from the shelves in the desk. I also taped off underneath the shelves because you will see underneath those shelves. So I'm gonna make sure I painted that. I didn't even bother taping off under the desk as you're not gonna see it. So I'm not gonna paint under there. The paint I'm using is just a grab and go white paint from Walmart. We don't spend a lot of money on white paint because it's just white paint. So this is what we do. And it's actually the same paint we've used throughout the entire house and all the trim. So we can grab one can if we ever need to do any touch-ups. So that is the color I went with for the desk. And then I used a combination of a paintbrush and a paint roller to apply the paint, making sure I got all the way up underneath those shelves. Sometimes there's some hidden little areas that you don't see when you're looking at it, but if you get underneath it, you will see it and you might see it from certain angles. So just take your time, make sure you get all underneath there. So it's finally starting to look like a desk and it's coming together, but we need to do a little bit of detail work. We're going to be using total tech to fill in some of the gaps that happen when um, you have uneven walls like I do. So there's kind of big gaps here, none on the other side, but we're going to make it all look cohesive. I am doing this little trick by taping off a grooved area where our total tech is going to sit into. So this is where it is becoming a sealant versus the adhesive that we used previously. So I'm basically going to caulk those edges and give it a seamless look. Total Tech actually comes in white and clear, so you, I'm sure you'll find one that will work great for your project. Another thing that I love about it too is that it is paintable, so if you just wanna paint right over it, you have that option too. Once I have my total tech applied, I'm just running my finger along that seam that is going to spread it out and also push it down into those grooves. And then what you wanna do is remove the tape immediately. You do not want this stuff to dry and then take your tape off. Go ahead and take it off now while it's still wet. Keep a trash bag next to you so you can quickly just toss your tape into the bag one at a time as you need to because you don't want any of that excess adhesive getting anywhere else except on that tape. And then I just love seeing that beautiful clean line perfect finish. Now, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of my total tech underneath these shelves too. I have some gaps going on. I really wasn't liking it. It definitely stood out. So I just ran my total tech into those grooves and ran my finger across it just like I did for the seams on the desk. 
I also made sure to do the seams along the wall where the fronts and the trim pieces were to make sure it had an even more seamless look that way against the side walls. I also want to mention that Total Tech will dry in about an hour, but it takes 24 hours to cure. So make sure it dries and cures completely before you do any painting over it if you do plan to do that. I also grabbed out my wall paint and did all the touch-ups that I needed to do for that. And then once everything was completely dry, paint and all of the adhesive and sealant, I was able to add extra storage like the baskets, accessories that my son had picked out to use in this space. And we even added a metal drawer unit from Ikea off to the side since there was no type of drawer underneath for him to store things. So this was a cute little addition to this space. And I just want to remind you what this space looked like before, just kind of a unuseful corner that we transformed and added storage to and functionality to. So now he has a space to work or play or create in. And also with the addition of the baskets in that side uh, drawer unit, he now has lots of storage too. I'll have lots of great, inexpensive, and easy storage solution videos popping up on your screen, so you can click those and watch those next. I'd also love to have you subscribe and come back as I bring you new DIYs, tutorials, and inspiration here every single week. I'll also have this big bedroom reveal coming very, very soon, and you'll learn how to make that faux brick wall. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today, and I will see you in the next one. Happy creating!